Hi, I'm Chuck, KK6USY. Welcome to Hammer Radio Ventures. Today we're going to take a look at the, uh, I bought this amp. It's a Micro PA50. Here's the amp. I'll show you more close-ups of it later. This amp is pretty good. It has one problem though. Mine reads, if the SWR is like 1.5, this one reads over 2, and then it'll kick out. That's a safety thing on this. So I'm going to show you how to fix this today. Now make sure you check yours first. And if you do decide to do anything, you do at your own risk. Let's check this out. All right, so this is the Mini 50. Let me show you the front of it here. Okay, excuse me. This is the Micro PA 50. Might as well pull this off. I don't want to do that. But you got to save it for the video, right? Now, I will... You have a, uh, this is your power button, and it tells you when it TXs. It has a lot of nice little functions on this little meter right here. It'll tell you SWR, it tells you your power out, maybe a few other things. I did stick these little feet on the bottom, if you guys can see those, just so it has like a little cush there, keeps it up off the bottom. The back of it is like this. Uh, some of the guys were wondering why it didn't have a, uh, B and C's on the back and said this is pretty much kind of for a um, I don't doesn't matter I've got adapters but a lot of guys are going to use this for QRP it has XT60 so that's good for 60 amps there so that's a good I like this I like this connector it's got an accessory switch here that you can um, you can take and uh, hook it to your radio for PTT it also senses and it changes bands for you also or basically the filters for you also it's got a fan on the back here. The fan's a little, a little noisy um, out in the wild. You probably won't, you probably won't hear anything. And it says, uh, I forget what it said, power-wise. It says five max, five watts max, and I don't think it'll take even five guys. That may not hurt it, but it'll probably, um, it'll probably time out at five watts, depending on the band, probably. Um, you might get that, you know, I think around two and a half is about all you're going to actually be able to put into it. And that'll get you about 50 out PEP. Now, I don't know if you guys can see it or not. I'm going to try and get a good view. But if you look at the bottom section down through these holes, and I'm going to bring you in a little closer. It's hard to see. But there's a heat sink inside with fins on it. The fins go down, I believe. Um, they go down. Well, there you, you can see it right there, guys, on this, this side right here. That's the fin. So it does have a heat sink inside, but nothing outside to get caught on your backpack or anything, which is... Uh, I've, I've watched the video of um, KD7QOW. He did a nice little write up on this and showed showed how the thing is timing out at, at the problem with the amp is it's a little too sensitive it seems and he's not the only one that's found this out a bunch of guys on the one of the um, soda things we're all talking about that it, it just it times out too easy and I did have it hooked to an RM Italy amp uh, not to it but in line with it to uh, boost the power because it the I'm using a Hermes light it only puts out five watts so I'm getting about anywhere from 80 to 100 watts out of the RM Italy. And every once in a while I'd like a little bit more, so I, was, I, I kind of bought this to get me by until I bought a, one of those Mercury amps, but it takes forever to get them. So this is just kind of getting me by so I can use the Hermes. Really nice unit. It's It's got some it's got some heft to it, guys. It's not, it doesn't feel cheap. Um, it feels substantial. So not the lightest thing you'd ever use for uh, Poda. Or, or excuse me, or soda actually. Still a nice little unit. We'll see how it holds up. I know he blew his finals on his, but he said he had, there's ways of going in here and disabling things. I haven't played with that yet. I just got this amp and I just, I, I ran across this video and then noticed that mine was doing pretty much the same thing. I mean, sometimes at a, at a 1.5 SWR, or, you know, it was kicking out. Now, if you look at the lower left corner here, I've got a circle around the resistor, and that's where we're going to put the 33 ohm resistor. 
on top of that one. And uh, that should take care of this problem and uh, hopefully help the SWR problems. Okay guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, if you guys can see this, let me get you a little bit closer here, hang on. All right, so this is a resistor, it's a 33 ohm. It can't it measure it out 33 and a half. But what I'm gonna do, here, let me see if this helps. All right, so what I'm gonna do, this is a 33 ohm resistor, measured 33 and a half, close enough. I'm gonna cut it right about here and here, and then I'm gonna bend a little tab, and just like an L on both sides. And then I, what I'll do is put a little bit of solder on the, uh, the old resistor and get this thing set and then put a little bit more on the other side and then set it and then solder them, okay? I'll probably do this off camera though because this thing is tiny. If you see this, it's like the size of a pin here. This thing's really small. It looks big when you look at it in the case, all right? I just thought, I thought maybe you guys might want to see a good, a good view of this thing. This is a, it's... I have to tell you guys, there, there's a heat sink underneath here, I think, and I can see it from the ends. So it does have a heat sink, but it doesn't stick out. Everything's smooth on the outside, and that's, that's what the KD7 QOW guy liked about it, because there's nothing to catch on your backpack or anything, but it does have a heat sink, because when I picked this thing up, it was it was heavier than I thought it was going to be, guys. Um, so I can get you a little closer shot here. So this is your uh, your filters section here. A lot of these little cheaper ones like this may not have this or as many filters. This one's pretty good, and I think it does uh, to do 80 through 10. I think is the, uh, the specs on it. Everything looks soldered pretty well. Looks like a pretty nice unit, guys. So we'll see how it works. If it doesn't work out, then uh, we'll have to work worry about that later. Just want to give you guys a little better view of everything. All right, it didn't go too bad, guys. I, I'm not the best solder in the world, but I can usually function well enough to do something like this. I use this, um, this is an ISO tip. The reason I used it, if you look at the tip on this thing, it's up here, it's really tiny, all right? So it's good for pit point stuff. I did a review on this. I'll uh, try to link a review for you guys, all right? So let me bring, let me uh, zoom this down for you guys. That's as close as I can get it, guys. But if you look, I added it right here. Now there's two, this is a 49, one qu a qu 49 quarter watt here, resistor and resistor here. You can actually replace some of these other ones, these little tiny ones, but this is seemed way easier to me. And I got this from KD7QOW. And the person that did actually the, all the, the legwork, he said, was G4BUD. And uh, But he did work out a good, what he thought was a good... What we're doing is we're taking this thing and making it a little bit less sensitive. This is a binocular core here. This is the sensing for the SWR. And what he's done... And what I've done here by, by doing this is just make it just a little less sensitive. This thing was, it was kicking out at like 1.5 or something like that sometimes. Or I've, I've got two amps. I was trying to, I'm, I'm running a little Hermes light and I'm trying to run, a, for now I'm running, I've got a, an amp on order, but it takes like a year to get it. And what I'm trying to do is run an amp into another amp and this thing would kick out where my other amp will kick out too on high on high SWR, but it wasn't kicking out at the same thing. And I want to. This will be something that I'll take. I've got a uh, a KX2, and I've also got a 705 that I take out sometimes. And this one's small enough and light enough that I think I would throw, especially with the KX2. This thing is it's about the same size as the KX2, to tell you the truth. So it'll be a good little QRP or not really QRP, but to take with a QRP rig and take it out on a soda or something like that. So that's probably what I'm going to do. But for now, I'm trying to run an amp into an amp just to get enough power. And uh, we'll see how this thing works. I had already tested this thing, and I ran across uh, this guy's video, KD7QOW. He's got a video also. 
I'll link that in the video in my video also. And everything he was saying was what I was noticing too. Uh, I would check SWR and, and this thing was reading a little bit high, it seemed like each time. So hopefully this works. If it does, I'll let you, I'll make another video on this later and then set it up on a radio and see how it works. Uh, after I test it just a little bit. Now, the only other thing I could say that I saw different, and I don't know if this is, if you notice this was a blue, blue one that I put in here. The only thing I see different is on his and my amp, this, these two resistors here, his are like the tan color. And I don't know if it's the color that makes a difference, but these are the one I bought is supposed to be a metal film instead of a, um, I forget what they call the other one. So, and they're a little bit more heat resistant. So I don't know if that's what these are or not. I'm not that familiar with the resistors on all the specs on them or anything, but uh, has the same, same markings as his. And this one's the same. All right. So I'll put this thing together and I'll, I'll do some testing on it. And uh, if not in this video, in another video, I'll get back to you guys. All right. I went ahead and hooked this thing up to amp instead of making two videos. Right now I've got the, uh, the Hermes set up. And I'm in an area where, let's see, now I'm going to move here a little bit. Okay, there's nobody on the band here. It hasn't been. So I'm going to hit the tune button, and you'll see the uh, meter move. It's showing 1.0. It's 7, 0.72 watts. Now let's bring the, uh, that's not the amp right now, though, okay? That's just the, uh, the drive. So I'm going to bring it up. Oh, it can only go about, let's see where we're at here now. So that's about two watts. Let's bring it up to a hair more. All right, let's see what that is. A little over two. Now we'll turn the amp on. Let's hit the tune button. So that's about 43 watts, 44. Go up just all right. We'll try it right here. That's 50 watts there. That's about three watts in. All right, so it works. And the SWR, what the SWR says, 1.03. That's pretty close to what my meter says. So my antenna analyzer. I set it with that first. This is on a doublet, and that's one of the problems I was having is. Uh, <laughs> have to really adjust it depending on the weather or whatever if it's raining and stuff like that so not the easiest antenna to use with this but it should work fine all right i just wanted to show that to you guys all right let's just go let's go up one one more half a db and see what it does you guys can hear the fan probably here we go so 53 and it's still good Let's go up one more half dB. It'll probably pop out this time. Oh, 55 watts, that's as far as I'm gonna push it, guys. All right, I just wanted to show that to you. All right, guys, hopefully this uh, video has helped to some of you guys that maybe you're having the same problem I was. Now, make sure you check your amp first. Yours might be okay. Uh, like I said on the, uh, the other guys, his wasn't, mine wasn't, and quite a few other people's. I mean, it's a safety factor, and it's overly safe is the problem. Okay, when I got done with mine, mine still, now it reads about 0.2 less than it really is. So it's a little on the uh, low side. Uh, you know, a uh, instead of a 33, maybe a 30 or something would have been better. I don't know. But most of the antennas I'm going to use this with are already pretty resonant, so I'm not too worried about it. But if you do have an antenna that's not resonant, make sure you check the SWR first. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. I'm Chuck, KK6USY for Ham Radio Adventures 73 all, and hope to catch you guys in the airways. And maybe I'll be on this one.